Hi there, I'm Eric Backer, a naturopath from New Zealand. Thank you for joining me in this presentation today. Today I'm going to share with you some very interesting information. I'm going to share with you information on how your gut bacteria could well likely be the cause and why you're not losing that weight and maintaining the weight loss that you've always longed for. I've been in practice now for over 30 years. I've seen tens of thousands of patients in my face-to-face -face clinic and more recently with Google online. I've been seeing patients in over 50 countries, mainly working through Skype, but also through FaceTime. And in that period, you can imagine, I've seen people with every kind of digestive disorder imaginable. People that were cast aside by the medical profession, people that had been to 10, 20 or 30 doctors and did not get any kind of solution at all to their gut problem or their health problem. Because in my opinion, most problems start and originate in the digestive tract and then move out to the rest of the body. So what are you going to learn in my upcoming presentation that you're about to view? I'm going to show you eight reasons why your gut bacteria may be sabotaging your best attempts in order to get that weight off and maintain that weight loss. I'm going to show you two key studies. The Mayo Clinic study from 2013 that shows you that just shifting one gut bacteria can result in a 527% increase in weight loss. The second study I'm going to talk about is the Danish study conducted more recently in 2017 which shows you that regardless of how perfect or clean you eat you can still not have the ability to lose the weight and maintain that weight loss. So I'm going to talk to you about obesogenic bacteria and also how bacteria influence every aspect of your being. Your human microbiome will influence how you think, how you feel about food, how much fat your body maintains or sheds, all aspects of your emotional being, your cognitive being and your physical being are governed by your bacteria in your gut. So you can understand how important this information is for you. Please be sure to watch this presentation right to the end. I'm going to show you my three-step program that's so simple to maintain, just for a small period of time. I'm going to show you the special ways of eating, which I really encourage all my patients to do. I'm also going to teach you a couple of key secrets on lifestyle. And then we're going to show you a couple of very basic dietary supplements, which are easy to get hold of, which are going to accelerate you know, this ability for your gut to turn it from a place where obesogenic bacteria thrive to a place where really healthy, friendly bacteria thrive. Now, this in turn is going to accelerate your weight loss, keep the weight off, but also improve most aspects, if not all aspects of your health, in, 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 including your sleep, your energy, and your ability to have a very happy long-term lifestyle. So please stay right to the end and watch this presentation. I'm absolutely convinced you're going to find it very interesting and you're going to get a lot of useful information out of it. Thank you for tuning in. Hi there. Let's look at some interesting information today. Let's look at how we can lose weight and maintain weight loss long term and permanently by improving our gut bacteria. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I've specialized in digestive disorders for a long time now. Many people know me online through my Candida Crusher YouTube channel. You'll find many, many thousands of videos on this channel covering just about every single aspect of digestive health, including parasitic problems, Candida yeast infections, and various other yeast problems that people suffer from, including SIBO and many bacterial issues that people face. I've been working these problems for decades. You name it, I've seen it. Check out the YouTube channel. The recommendations I'm going to give you today are based on my own very own personal experiences. All the extensive training I've had in many different countries over many different years. And as I mentioned, including thousands of patients. All my work is science based. There's no supposition here. I'm going to be showing you several scientific studies today. Some actually might shock you. Some of this information you may have likely have never even heard of before. Here's a picture of me in my garden. I love growing foods. I'm 59 years old. I've been growing vegetables and fruits since I was 16 years of age. I try and walk my talk. I exercise. I drink lots of pure water. I try and eat lots of fresh organic food. So why would we focus on the gut bacteria? Well, you've probably read a lot of information online recently about the human microbiome. Many experts believe there are more cells in your colon, in your large intestine, than actually there are in your entire body. There are trillions of cells, literally several pounds of bacteria. 
We know now that bacteria in our gut microbiota influence every single aspect of our health. Take a look at the image there on the slide in the bottom right. You'll see the gray gut microbiota interfacing with the gut mucosa. And of course, we get a lot of immune cells living in this mucosa, influencing the gut brain axis and ultimately the brain. So we have four pathways that communicate with the brain through the gut and three pathways that communicate from the brain to the gut. So it's a two-way system. You may well have heard of the phrase, the gut is the second brain. So doesn't it make a lot of sense for us to focus on your second brain when it comes to losing weight and maintaining that loss? You're going to feel so much better when you follow some of the secrets I'm about to share with you soon. You won't have so much gas or bloating anymore. You'll feel more comfortable. Your energy will go up. Your sleep will almost certainly improve along with your mood and your cognitive function. But the great thing is, apart from losing weight, is you're going to have a lot less chance of developing a chronic disease of the Western civilization that so many people suffer from in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. Gut bacteria play a most profound role, not just in losing weight, but allowing you to keep that weight off for the rest of your life. We've certainly seen this. Let's have a look at antibiotics, for example. We know now that when children are exposed to antibiotics under two years of age, their ability to gain weight absolutely, definitely increases by the time they get you know, to the 40s or 50s. So obesity jumps up almost 30%. Plenty of research validates this now. But growing gut bacteria takes time. The best thing for a baby, naturally, is to have a vaginal birth. This way it's going to be, it's going to have the benefits conferred through it by the mother. It's going to be getting those beneficial bacteria that it needs. Antibiotics affect the gut so bad. They were used a long time ago initially. Farmers knew that when they gave livestock antibiotics, they could fatten up livestock. Maybe you've taken so many antibiotics in your life that they've actually fattened you up as well. I'm going to show you how to put things right. Here's another slide. Antibiotics in trees, childhood obesity. You only have to go to Google and do a search for this and find literally dozens of studies that actually say this to be a fact. Here's a good slide. You may know me from my YouTube channel, Candida Crusher. I've got over 4,000 books on health. I've got almost every single diet book you can imagine. You name the diet, I will have tried it on the patient. These diets fail to work for the majority of people. They fail. They fail in their ability for that person to maintain weight loss for a long period of time. It's not just about what you eat. It's about what the bacteria are doing with what you eat, as you'll soon see in some studies. Let's talk about the eight reasons now why healing your digestive system may well be one of the most important things you can do now to get that weight off. Let's now take a look at the first fact. One of the big reasons why so many people struggle to lose weight in spite of sufficient exercise, in spite of cutting calories back, in spite of doing everything they can in their power to lose weight, but they still can't get the bacteria off. A study was conducted in 2013 involving people aged between 18 to, I think it was about 65. A small group of people were chosen, 26 of these adults, and were put on a lifestyle program involving predominantly walking. And we're looking at a high fiber, low caloric diet. Still samples were taken from these participants before they began the program and also at the end to see what the difference was in their gut bacteria. And the surprising thing was, regardless of what, you know, what these people did, who couldn't lose the weight, and the people who could lose the weight, it was the gut bacteria. It was a small change in gut bacteria. So we're looking at a massive difference here in weight loss in this group. The successful group lost almost 20 pounds, while the less successful group lost only on average about three pounds. Now remember, this was conducted you know, involving walking and the similar type of diet that these people shared, yet one group lost a lot more weight than the other group. So what the researchers found was the difference was in a bacteria. So one particular bacteria, Phasicolarca bacterium, was associated with more successful weight loss whereas the less successful group had an increasing amount of bacteria called dialyster. 
But what does this mean to you, all these funny words? Well, diallister is a bacteria. If you've got in large amounts, it's going to actually start consuming those calories and moving those out of the system. That means that you're not getting the benefit of getting increased energy from those calories. So you're not really going to get the power you need from the food that you're eating. They can also mess up your blood sugar, make you more tired. They can also create appetite issues and all kinds of other issues. So just this one bacteria, if you've got too much of this one and not enough of the other one. Now imagine if we throw some candida in on the mix or some small intestinal bacterial growth in on the mix and we mess up your gut in other ways with bacteria. In spite of eating well, in spite of exercising, how many people do you know that have a near perfect diet yet can't shed those pounds? This may be one of the most important slides you know, in this whole presentation is the shift in gut bacteria of one group of people versus the other can make or break the difference when it comes to losing weight. Now look at the last bullet point. The people who didn't have dialyster were able to lose 17.4 pounds while those who could only manage to drop 3.3 pounds you know, there's a big difference here. We're talking over 500% difference in weight loss just because of gut microbes. That's very exciting news for somebody like you who's watching this right now. So by manipulating that gut bacteria, improving the beneficial count, it's going to make a big difference when it comes to you losing weight or maintaining that weight. Let's go further now and have a look at some other studies that were conducted involving mice. This will further illustrate the point. When we shift gut bacteria, we can shift a person's ability to gain or lose body fat. So a scientist here basically worked with mice. They took gut bacteria from different types of mice. One type of mouse was bred to be quite obese, and the other one was bred to stay quite lean. So what they did is they put the gut bacteria into a third group. So lean mice raised in a sterile environment to produce no gut bacteria at all. So they basically took the bacteria out of these mice and had them as a kind of blank canvas. So when they got these lean mice with no gut bacteria, with a clean gut, and they put bacteria of the fat mice, the obese mice, in there, they got fat. They got really, really fat. Now again, we're looking at mice that were eating a similar kind of diet, and the only difference here was the change in gut bacteria. And in fact, within about six weeks, these were just as fat as the mice that were bred to become obese. So just by shifting the bacteria again, it made a huge difference to the body size of these mice. But in contrast, the, the mice that were sterile, the sterile gut, that got the bacteria from the lean mice, they stayed lean. Isn't that amazing? Now they went one step further. Now we're looking at gut microbes from human twins. One was obese and the other one was lean. So then they started to move these bacteria from the human beings into the sterile mice, but the, exactly the same thing happened. The mice who were given the bacteria from the bigger human became quite big, and those who were given bacteria from the lean human, they stayed quite lean. And again, we're not talking about a diet change, we're talking about a bacterial transplant change. So when they implanted bacteria from the skinny people into the fat mice, they discovered when the obese mice were implanted with gut bacteria from lean humans, the lean bacteria started to muscle in and they caused a lot of weight loss. But the same thing didn't happen when they had the mice bred to be lean were implanted with bacteria from the larger humans. So no matter how the diet was changed, the mice who had lean bacteria could not be colonized by the fat bacteria. That's phenomenal news, isn't it? Absolutely phenomenal. Here's quite an interesting study that was conducted in Denmark. And again, it perfectly illustrates how gut bacteria can have a profound effect on a person's ability to gain weight or to lose weight. Now we've got a study involving people eating very, very good foods, a specific type of diet. So we're talking about a diet, you know, quite high in vegetables, fruits, berries, fatty fish, almost like a Mediterranean diet. So two groups of people. We've got group A, we've got group B. For 26 weeks, group A ate a very healthy diet. And as we mentioned, lots of, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, quite lean, 
high fiber, low fat. And group B consumed the standard Danish diet, which is very similar to the standard American diet or the SAD diet, lots of processed foods, deep fried foods, breads, cheeses, milk, all the foods that many people like to eat. So after a period of time, 26 weeks isn't a lot of time, the first group who ate the healthy diet lost 7.7 .7 pounds, while the group who ate the not so healthy diet, the standard American diet, only lost 3.7, not even 4 pounds. So when they found, when they studied the gut bacteria of the group A, they discovered half the people had a special ratio of Prevotella and Bacteroides, so bacteria. So group A lost a lot more weight than the other people in group A who didn't have this bacterial ratio. So now we've actually differentiated between two groups eating the same type of healthy diet. This proves even more the fact that in spite of eating a healthy diet now, in spite of exercising, we still are not going to achieve the desired weight loss that we're looking for because the bacteria are not balanced. Isn't that incredible? Study now after study is coming out to support the fact that it's all about bacteria. So once you start to understand that, it's very exciting. Once you understand the fact that if you can couple a very good exercise program with the right type of food, similar to this very healthy food in this study and on top of that you clean up the gut get rid of any yeasts that are overgrowth get rid of any small intestinal bacterial overgrowths there implant beneficial bacteria in there you're going to have a killer combination it's almost guaranteed to burn off that fat that body fat that you've been trying to get rid of for so long so let's think about this for a second in this study losing weight came from eating the right food plus having the right type of bacteria so here's the fourth fact. Gut bacteria regulates how much fat your body actually stores. So all the bacteria in your tummy, particularly what we call the gram-negative bacteria, have got this like shell, this coating on it, this structure that they're made of called lipopolysaccharides. So when the bacteria die, this is what's left over. It's a little bit like a skeleton's left from a human being when they passed over. So these LPS can stimulate different responses in people. Studies have shown that when you give LPS to mice, they gain as much weight and have similar blood sugar spikes as mice fed an extremely high fat diet. Meaning, if you've got a gut with a lot of bacteria that are not very good, and you get a lot of you know, die off, a lot of bad influences coming off these cells, particularly when the immune system becomes involved, you could be looking at obesity again here. So when you have high levels of beneficial bacteria, they produce particular proteins which decrease fat storage. Now lactobacillus has been linked up with this particular protein. So giving a person good levels of probiotics helps to downregulate what this LPS does to the body. In simple terms, if you've got a healthy gut, you've got a higher chance of foods you're eating being converted to energy that makes you feel good. When the gut's in poor shape, you feel more tired, more lethargic, and it's a lot easier to pack on the pounds. Let's look at the fifth fact. Gut bacteria also affect satiety. Or so they determine how full you feel after you've consumed your meal. Right? Research was conducted on a bacteria called E. coli, which makes up about 1% of your gut bacteria. Now, E. coli can behave very differently depending on the type of food you know, that you consume. And E. coli, in turn, have a very powerful influence on leptin and ghrelin and other hormones that influence you know, your behavior and your ability to want to eat food or not. So the more balanced the gut and the healthier the balance of the beneficial bacteria are, the more likely you're going to be producing enough of these hormones that control your appetite that stop you from wanting to eat these foods. Remember we spoke about the short-chain fatty acids? Well, here's one called propionate. A study of 60 overweight adults found taking propionate for 24 weeks significantly increases these levels of these hormones, which regulate appetite. So how do you get more propionate in your body? Easily. You eat more vegetables, you eat more lean meats and fruits, and you avoid crappy, junky, takeaway foods. That's how you build better propionate levels. Let's look at fact six. 
good bacteria prevent you from absorbing dietary fat and make you actually pass it out instead? So this is quite an interesting concept and many studies now are starting to you know, come to light that are showing that your body can actually, with under the influence of lactobacillus species in particular, or good bacteria, you can actually pass out more body fat than actually re retain it and store it. So this is quite exciting news. So what we've learned up to this point is that the dialyster bacteria make you absorb less calories from carbs. But now we've also found that probiotics can go further and stop you from actually utilizing the body fat that you're consuming. You can actually pass that out. This is very exciting. In a four-week study, taking probiotics reduced weight gain and fat gain when people were overfed by 1,000 calories per day. The other thing I'd like you to remember is having good levels of lactobacillus allows your body also to produce good levels of B vitamins and vitamin K, this is going to power up your energy. So you're not only going to excrete fat, you're going to actually have more energy, which is going to burn more body fat. So lactobacillus are quite important. So the ability of the gut to inhibit calorie absorption of simple carbs and fat instead of prioritize the digestion of protein has been observed in many studies, in both animals and in human beings. It's all about getting the balance right in the gut. It's all about getting good levels of lactobacillus, <clears throat> excuse me, and low levels of yeast in there. And we're going to achieve that as we see later on with a carefully planned diet and also some probiotics and enzymes, which we'll discuss later. Fact number seven, probiotic consumption has been directly linked to a reduction in body mass index, waist size, and a risk of heart disease, diabetes, and also cancer. So... Studies in obese children show that when probiotics were given to these kids, it resulted in a significant reduction in waist circumference, BMI, and many different risk factors. And another study pu published in the British Journal of Nutrition, women who took probiotics on a restricted calorie diet lost more fat than those who popped a placebo for the same period of time. Look at fact number eight. The bacteria in your gut have a profound effect on your mood and your behavior and your cognition. Lots of research is only just starting to come out now about the gut-brain connection and the brain-gut connection. The primary brain speaks to the secondary brain and in turn the secondary brain speaks to the primary. I've got many, many years of experience in the clinic and I've seen all too many patients have a total inability to lose weight when they live in stressful situations. They tend to make the wrong coil when it comes to eating food, which no doubt will influence their gut bacteria. I could cite at least 50 cases just in the last two years alone of people who've very successfully lost an incredible amount of weight when a big shift occurred in their life in terms of their relationship or their occupation. They may move to another country. And many of these people had resistant weight, weight that would not come off in spite of all the exercise and all the diets and all the you know, things they tried, they just couldn't lose the weight. But when they had that shift, that change in their stress, their weight came off, which again shows you that connection between gut and brain is so profound. When you feel happy, you act happy and you think happy, your gut changes, your gut bacteria change, especially if you eat good food. We know now, for example, that more chemicals are made in the gut that influence our mood and cognition than actually are made in the brain itself. And every time you eat food, you're going to alter that bacterial blend. You're going to manipulate the ability for the gut to make those hormones that influence how you think or feel. This is a very good example of how important it is for you to always eat good food because it'll make you feel good, which in turn will make you be happy, make the right choices, and you'll have a much more successful ability, not just to lose weight, but to keep that weight off for your life. Let's talk about some solutions. Let's look at ways on how you can get that body fat off. But first, let's have a look at a three-step process which I discovered for my patients. I've been working in this area for over 30 years. I've seen tens of thousands of people, and I can tell you now, first thing you've got to do is remove the bad stuff from the gut, stuff that's causing you problems. People who've got a sick gut will tend to have all kinds of problems. People who are overweight are often tired, 
They'll often have bloating and gas. The bowels may be irregular. All too many people I see have constipation. They don't go to the bathroom every day. You know, they may be taking a medication for GERD or reflux. They could be taking a medication to make them go to the bathroom. They've got some type of problem in their gut that needs fixing up. They may have, they will may have candida in their digestive system or some dysbiotic bacteria. Often they will lack beneficial bacteria. But the big thing I find, they have imbalances in their gut. And it's often because of an overgrowth that needs cleaning up. So we really want the digestive system to be silent, to be quiet. You, you don't feel a healthy gut. You go to the bathroom every day without a problem. If this is you, this could be one of the reasons why you can't lose that weight because you've got an imbalanced gut that needs balancing out. So what we've got to do is we've got to fix your gut. Get it tidy, get it nice and clean. Transform it to a place of bloating and gas into something that's silent and quiet that functions optimally. This is also going to ensure, remember we spoke previously about the, the brain-gut connection, this is going to ensure that you're going to feel better. A healthy functioning gut means a happier and healthier person. A person with less anxiety, no depression, happy mood. A person who's going to make the right choices in life because he or she feels really good. And that can really make a big difference when it comes to losing that weight and keeping it off forever. When you're happy and healthy like this with a balanced gut, you're not going to want to crave sweet foods anymore. You're not going to want to buy junk food. You're not interested in sodas anymore. You'll cut back on coffee consumption. You'll need less of these stimulants. You'll need less alcohol, all because you're feeling a lot better. And these are the secrets to maintaining permanent weight loss, is getting that gut in fantastic shape so it in turn gives your brain a really good signal. You'll notice that very... Well, people in, you know, who appear to have a good body shape and who maintain that, fit, healthy, happy people, are happy people. And this is what I see with a lot of patients who are overweight and obese. They're not happy people. Is it the gut bacteria? Who knows? But when you start improving that diet and balancing that, that microbiome, big things will start to happen. So let me tell you on how I really got into this industry and why I'm excited to work with people like you right now. A long time ago, I had a candida problem. I was very sick. You can actually watch my case history on my YouTube channel. I had lots and lots of problems. I had bloating, I had gas, I had a male yeast infection. I got very depressed and very anxious. And I discovered that medical science couldn't really help me. I had to help myself. A naturopathic physician I went to helped me a lot put me on the road to recovery, made me realize that I had to make really good food choices all the time. I had to kill that yeast in the gut, that overgrowth, which I successfully did. Got me to a point where I studied natural medicine, and now, 34 years later, I've got the experience now and skill set to help people out there just like you, who also want to recover, who want to get that body shape, and want to get that energy that I've got now at 60 years of age. I've maintained now the same body weight I have now at 60 that I had when I was 19. But I can tell you my energy and vitality has doubled over that time, maybe quadrupled. And you can have the same kind of energy and vitality that I've got just by repairing that gut, by getting that digestive system in a really good shape. So remove, replace and rebuild is the three step procedure which I tend to work now with patients regardless of their condition. First we have to clean up the gut. In your case we talked about the fat bacteria and the, you know, the nasty bugs like yeasts and dysfunctional dysbiotic flora. We need to clean them out. We need to use something that's really potent but safe and it's something that's not addictive. Something that's not going to wreck the digestive system like antibiotics do. The second thing that we want to do is replace or recolonize the gut with good bacteria. So we want to fortify your gut and give it the ability to become powerful and strong. And remember, this in turn is going to give your brain the right kind of signals. It's going to make you make the right kind of choices every single day going forward so you don't slip back into those bad habits of eating donuts and you know having all that takeaway food and soda drinks. All that candy and ice cream that people commonly like to eat, 
you won't want those foods anymore. You've replaced the bad stuff with the good stuff, and that's going to give your brain the good signals and the good messages. So you'll be making the right choices consistently. The third thing, we're going to restore the gut. We're going to use digestive enzymes. I tend to use them at the same time as probiotics. So remember, this is going to really help to improve your short-chain fatty acid profile further down in your gut, which in turn is going to give your brain even better signals. At this stage, the bloating's gone, the gas is gone, your bowels will be working every day, the weight will start to come off. So you've finally given the gut the chance now to come into its own, and it in turn is going to improve every aspect of your being. This is the rebuild phase. It's a very simple A, B, C process that's worked with thousands of people that I've been working with now for decades. It, it always works. When it's done like this, simply, it will work, and it can work for you too. Let's take a brief look now at the three-stage plan which I set aside for patients to really restore their, their digestive function. The first thing is we look at the three-stage gut restoring diet. Now when you hear the word diet, I don't want you getting confused with you know, a caloric restriction program where you're just going to put you on lettuce leaves and maybe have a protein shake once a day. That's not the whole idea of it at all. Believe me, the people I work with really like eating the kind of foods I recommend because I just get people on healthy food. Remember the Danish study we spoke about with the healthy Danish diet, the Mediterranean diet, you know, involving meat, eggs, fish, chicken, you know, good quality fish, lots of vegetables, good fruits, nuts and seeds, whole grains. We're not going to starve you. We're going to put you on good food. We're going to take the junk out. So the Mevi diet is meat, eggs, vegetables, and yogurt, you know, or fermented or cultured foods. The low allergy component we start working with to take the most allergenic foods out, and then we start reintroducing foods after that to really make sure we get your diet perfect. The second thing is we're going to look at lifestyle changes. You're not going to lose weight if you're living in a high stress environment or you're working in a crappy job or you've got poor relationships with people. You need to make changes here. And one of the most important lifestyle changes you can make is to really work on improving your sleep. You can't get a good gut function if you've got a poor sleep function. And third, we're going to look at a, just a couple of high quality key supplements that really help to clean up that gut and repopulate it with really good bacteria. Did you know there are certain pharmaceutical medications that can actually wreck your gut, make you gain weight, make you more tired, make you more depressed? You need to check this out with your medical doctor. If you're taking a medication and you can't lose weight or you think it's making you tired, you need to get some help. Antibiotics, there are many different classes of antibiotics, and we know the fact that antibiotics actually destroy gut flora. They create a lot of problems. Antibiotics are in fact associated with weight loss with many people. We've discussed previously that antibiotics are in fact used by you know, people that farm animals uh, to gain more weight. They want these animals to gain more weight. Antibiotics help them gain weight. We've seen this in chickens and hogs and other animals. So if you're taking an antibiotic regularly, this could be one of the reasons why you're not losing weight. Other medications, for example, like cortisone drugs, can make you tired. They can mess up your adrenal function. They can mess up your thyroid function. They can slow you down. They can affect your sleep. They can increase fluid retention. They can alter blood sugar ratios. If we go further, there are many medicines for the digestive system that can also alter your GI function. They can wreck your appetite. They can make you more tired. They can prohibit your body's ability to uptake many different nutrients, like magnesium, like zinc, for example. They can decrease your stomach acid, relieving more to bloating and you know, increasing bloating more and gas. So as you can see, it's just a small example of many, many different medications. It can mess up your gut, make you tired, and reduce your body's ability to burn off that body fat. Go to Google, have a look at the medication that you're taking, and if in doubt, go and see your medical doctor and discuss this a lot further. This could be a very important step for you, in, you know, in, when, you, when it comes to losing your body weight. Let's talk about the big cleanup. This is the first step on the road to getting your digestive system in really good shape. It's one of the most important things you can do, is to go to your refrigerator, go to your pantry, and start cleaning up your act, you know. 
don't worry too much about the recommendations we're going to make because right now because later on once you get the body shape you want you can go back and eat a lot of these types of foods just like I can now I can eat a lot of these foods but I don't generally snack on them but if you go to a party or a friend's house or you go out for dinner you can eat these foods occasionally but you don't want to fill your pantry with these foods and let the whole family feast on them because you're just encouraging really poor behaviors which will eventually contribute to weight gain, which so many people struggle with these days. So what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of all the junk out of our diet. That's what we're going to do. We're going to look at all of the foods that you know that you shouldn't be eating. The foods that are sabotaging you, the soda drinks, the candy, the ice cream, the bags of chips, the bags of cookies, all these shocking foods that taste nice, but don't do nice things to your body. I call it the warm turkey approach. I like people to come down off this sort of junk over a 14 day period. Reduce your alcohol intake. Reduce your caffeine intake. Take this stuff out of your diet. Stop going to takeaway places and buying these foods. Stop buying cups of coffee and donuts all the time. It takes time for you slowly to transition through this. So I'm going to give you 14 days to do this, which is more than enough time. We don't like people to make abrupt diet changes eating this kind of junk food and the following day following a healthier approach you've got to come down off this crap diet carbonated drinks refined sugars artificial sweeteners high fructose corn syrup foods that are very sweet to taste brightly colored lots of refined foods in packets jars bottles you need to get rid of all this stuff don't make excuses you know you shouldn't be eating this stuff it's time now to take charge and to reduce this in your diet slowly over a two week period and then just stop. Let's look at probably the most important part of the diet or the MEVI diet. The MEVI diet has been around a long time. It's been around since the 80s. It's nothing new. I found this MEVI diet approach in a Candida book, a very interesting book called The Yeast Syndrome. And it's written by a guy called Dr. John Trowbridge. So the MEVI diet is essentially a paleo diet. It's a high protein diet. Yet what we've also done is we put lots of vegetables in there, lots of fresh fruits in there, lots of yummy nuts and seeds in there, some yogurt in there. This is a very healthy diet. You could call it a Mediterranean, paleo Mediterranean diet, you know, with cultured and fermented foods in there. This diet's going to leave you satisfied and make you feel full. This is how I've been eating now for a long, long time. And I've got ideal body weight for my height. You're going to feel powered up on this. You're going to enjoy this diet. It's going to be tasty, fresh and healthy. So you're not going to be starving. We're not going to be putting you on a very low calorie diet whatsoever. In fact, this diet is going to make you feel very full and satisfied. And the bonus of it is it's going to be building up those gut bacteria that we so desperately want to achieve with you. We want to get the balance, remember, with the prevotella, the bacteroidets and the firmicutes. So if we can get a nice balance of bacteria happening, encourage the proliferation of beneficial bacteria, we're going to crowd out those yeasts, we're going to crowd out those bad bacteria, we're going to get rid of all those viruses in the gut, we're going to make your gut a very healthy and happy place. That in turn is going to reflect in you feeling great about your life, and you're going to lose the weight, because the balance is coming back. Remember, when you eat foods that we're trying to get you to take out, in the initial phase, in the two week coming down phase, if you keep continuing to eat these foods, all you're doing is encouraging the proliferation of bad bacteria and bad yeasts, which will make you feel more anxious and more depressed and more tired. They will continue to keep you in that pool of making bad dietary choices. In that 14 day coming down period, you start including these kinds of foods into your diet. You put nice pieces of lean meat in there, you put nice pieces of chicken in there. You put nice pieces of fish in there. I like people to have protein at least twice a day, preferably with lunch and with their meal time, just small amounts. I like people to have brown rice in their diet and quinoa. Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds, almonds, walnuts, small amounts. We don't need large amounts of nuts. A few pieces of fresh fruit every single day. A couple of eggs in your diet. Once a day, a couple of times a week is enough. This is going to make you feel full and satisfied. You're going to stop thinking about snacking on food. But the big thing is, we want to look at the vegetable choices. 
because these are the things that really help to encourage that wonderful balance of the bacteria that we're looking for. We want to reduce those obesogenic bacteria. We want to get the lean bacteria happening for you. And this is the diet that's going to achieve that end. So by focusing on this and slowly incorporating these foods into your diet now and using this as an anchor for the rest of your life, particularly once we've discouraged the bad stuff and cleaned up your gut, you're going to get a great body shape. And furthermore, you're going to feel happy and have less anxiety. It's going to make all the difference in the world. This second phase is very important for people who are particularly struggling with their weight. People who have been on medications, you know, asthma medications. People who have been on antibiotics recurrently. People who have been on stomach medications. So if, you know, if you're taking any kind of medication for allergy or sinus or hay fever, what this step does is by removing these potential foods from the, these potentially allergenic foods from the diet, we're not challenging your immune system. It's going to make it a lot easier for your gut to get in a state of harmony and order much quicker than if you keep these foods in there that could potentially trigger immune responses. Now have a good look at the picture. Have a look at this slide. We've got cow's milk, we've got bananas, oranges, pineapple, we've got bread, gluten, wheat, we've got cashews. You need to be careful of tree nuts. I always like people only to have a few tree nuts in their diet per day. And in my experience is some men in particular could easily a quarter or half a pound of nuts in a day as a snack. Not a good idea. Same with the chocolate. Best to put chocolate aside for now. We can always snack on that down the track. Be cautious of soy products. I have soy in my diet two to three times a week. You may not be handling soy at the moment if your gut is quite permeable or leaky. So the intestinal permeability is something that I always try and repair with people. So that's why these potential allergenic foods need to be removed from the diet initially and eventually they can be put back in one by one. All of these foods you see in front of you I have in my diet presently, but not every single day. My digestive system is in great shape. I can tolerate these foods and you'll be able to tolerate these foods as well in time. But don't rush it. Don't be in a hurry. You may even need to do a food allergy test with your doctor, your naturopathic physician or functional medicine doctor. If you really believe that you've got food allergies or food intolerances, go and ask for a food allergy test. You can get a blood test done that can identify any kind of an allergy that you've got. Good tests involve about 98 foods in several categories, you know, the meats, the vegetables, you know, for example. So you can determine if you've got a food allergy or not and take appropriate steps to eliminate those key trigger foods from your diet. Especially important if you've got resistant belly fat and you can't lose that fat. In spite of taking probiotics or you've tried everything, this is a key step to do. This is going to ensure that you're not shadow boxing, you know, that your immune system is not shadow boxing these potential antigens in the diet. Very important step, as often overlooked by many people. This is called the low allergy phase of the diet. And I highly recommend that you follow this. Let's talk about the third phase now of the gut restoring diet, the reintroduction phase. Everybody wants to go back to the foods that they were previously consuming. Everyone wants to go back to chips and sodas and donuts and all those kind of foods. But I can tell you this, after working with people for a long time, once you start feeling great, really good, you're going to be far less inclined to want to go back to these kind of foods because your digestive system will have changed. Your bacteria are now giving your brain a different kind of signal, a different kind of message. You're going to feel that happy. You're not going to want to go back to a lot of these foods. But what about going back to other foods that you may have eliminated, like bread or milk or oranges or bananas or foods like that? Well, this is where we're going to start putting these foods back in again. You need to take your time and don't really do this in a hurry. As I mentioned, at this stage, your digestion will have improved significantly. You will have likely lost some weight already, no doubt. You'll have a lot less bloating, a lot less gas. Your bowel motion should be improved at this point. So take your time and don't rush this process. I want you to start introducing the foods first out of the list of the foods you've you know, taken out that you like the least. All right. The foods that you like the most are the last ones you introduce. And there's a specific reason for that. We don't put those foods back in 
initially right up front because that could mean that you're going to go back into your old eating patterns again. So I'd like you to introduce those foods, you know, write down a list of all the foods you've taken out, the, of the foods that you've pulled out of your diet, and then we're going to re reverse those. Put those in with the foods you like the least up into the foods you like the most. It's going to make a big difference. It'll also mean that your brain's going to change the way that it perceives these foods. You'll be less likely to get back into, into bad snacking habits again. So again, I'll repeat myself, patience is the key. You need to take your time. You could do this over even a two, three month period. The more gradual you do this process, the more likely you're going to stay with a refined MEVI diet, you know, with some modifications to the reintroduction. And that's going to form the basis of the diet for the rest of your life. Because it's going to ensure that your microbiome stays healthy and balanced and the same. And remember, that's the key to keeping the weight off permanently. Because this is not about weight loss. This is about permanent weight loss. There's a big difference. Most people I've worked with all my life tend to lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. If you follow this, these instructions as outlined in this presentation, you're going to keep that weight off for the rest of your life. Let's take a look at lifestyle changes and how stress impacts on the gut. I've spoken in many previous YouTube videos on how I believe that lifestyle is in fact 75% of the recovery when it comes to digestive problems. 25% would be actually taking stuff like supplements or you know looking at different types of therapy, but the majority or the bulk of, in my opinion, uh, the way for a person to really improve their life is to improve their lifestyle. And we know that because stress impacts on every single cell of the body, apart from dead tissue like nails or hair. So if we have a look and drill it down, the thyroid and the adrenal glands are particularly affected by stress, and they in turn affect so many different aspects of our well-being. What you may not be aware of is that under stress, particularly long-term, low-grade chronic stress, your digestive system is seriously affected. The ability for the body to output digestive enzymes can be reduced up to 20,000 fold just by long-term stress. So this means that your stomach is not producing stomach acid properly, your pancreas is, the effect of your pancreas is reducing, your liver is not quite effective anymore, blood's being moved away from the digestive organs to the periphery of the body under stress. So this really precludes good digestive system ability. This allows a person to develop more gas, more bloating, more reflux disease, and these in turn are countered by pharmaceutical medications which further impact on reducing the effectiveness of the digestive system. So if you can get yourself uh, into a situation where you're living a relatively low stress lifestyle, you're in a far better position to have a better body shape. I've seen all too many patients over the years carry far too much weight that live in long-term, low-grade, stressful situations. I particularly see this with teachers, with people working in hospitality, industry, uh, single parents, people living in, in relationships that are not very good, you know, arguing quite a lot. I see it with people looking after sick relatives. I see it in entrepreneurs. I see it in many different situations particularly where stress impacts on that person. And that person then you know, has a problem eating properly and living properly and sleeping properly. And consequently, the weight piles on. This is particularly so with women who go through hormonal changes, you know, who have problems with teenagers or with their partner. Many of these women just can't seem to lose the weight. You know, they've had a few children, the babies are long grown up, but they've still got that belly fat, they've still got that butt fat, and they can't lose that weight. If you can't work on stress in your life you know, and learn and understand the connection between stress and weight, you'll never properly end up losing that weight that you so desperately want to lose. So if you're living in a stressful relationship, you may need to make some changes. If you're, living in, if you're working with a stressful occupation, you may need to fire yourself from that job or fire your boss. You may need to look at something different. Because it's not just about the weight, it's also about reducing your body's ability to develop diabetes or heart disease or even cancer. And many of these diseases now are linked with stress and obesity. One of the more important aspects of stress also is not getting sufficient sleep. 
sleep now or lack of sleep has been linked with anxiety, depression, and also obesity. Studies have been conducted showing that when people sleep less, their microbiome changes. And that in turn affects them profoundly. Also, your digestive system makes many hormones that improve your sleep cycle, like dopamine, like serotonin, and melatonin. Many of these core hormones are made in your digestive system. So again, with a healthy and balanced gut, and with getting plenty of sleep, you'll find it a lot easier, not just to lose the weight, but to keep that weight off long term. What I've been seeing the last several years, as I've mentioned, I've been in the clinic for 30 plus years, is a lot of younger people not being able to lose weight. And is it any wonder? Many younger people today have Netflix, they have Google, they have all this wonderful stuff 24 hours on tap. Many young people today sleep up to two hours less than young people did in the 60s and 70s. And this is associated also with weight gain, anxiety, and depression, something we're seeing more and more of in society. If you don't have enough time to sleep at night, maybe you can schedule a bit of a nap in the afternoon between about two to four. I call it 20 peaceful minutes. So anywhere between 20 to 30 minute lie down session could be very beneficial to improving your sleep cycle at night. Don't rest too close to going to bed. Rest preferably earlier in the afternoon or maybe when you get back from work. Even just a 15 minute lie down on, on the sofa is going to be or couch is going to be a lot better than not doing that at all. So napping can contribute to weight loss, according to studies. An interesting study was published in the American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology and Metabolism, outlining exactly that point, that people who nap regularly tend to have a better sleep cycle at night, which can certainly contribute towards getting that, that body fat off. So there are various studies that you can look up online regarding sleep and weight. So sleep deprivation is one of the worst things you can do for your gut bacteria. A study was published a few years ago where researchers took normal weight men and let them sleep for between quarter to three to seven a.m. So that's only about four hours for two nights in a row. After just two nights of partial sleep deprivation, these men had a bunch of changes in their gut bacteria associated with many different metabolic problems. They also had a poor insulin sensitivity and that's going to make them more tired during the day and also snack more on carbohydrate foods. So tired people often look for caffeine. They look for something to give them a hit, something to give them a boost. And this is often where people will eat things like donuts or waffles with lots of, you know, fake syrup on top. Sugar often drives people. And then in the evening they want beer or wine to relax and calm down. So poor sleep often will end up, you know, causing poor dietary choices which will end up causing weight gain. So now you can start to see losing you know, sleep means you'll probably never lose weight. All right. Let's look at another study regarding mice. Researchers subjected mice to chronic sleep fragmentation, otherwise known as having terrible, a terrible night's sleep when you keep waking up all the time. We've all had those kind of nights. At the end of 14 days, the gut bacteria look really messed up and really bad. And with that gut problem, they had more inflammation in their fatty tissue. They had more fat tissue. They had, again, insulin sensitivity problems. And they had all kinds of issues. So by having disrupted sleep, you know, because women often say to me, I can't lose that belly fat after I've had the babies. And now you can see having disrupted sleep throughout raising children and throughout, you know, these years, it can really contribute to stubborn belly fat, or stubborn ability to lose weight in general. Another study let's have a look at, it links shift work to obesity through the gut bacteria. It's well known that shift work is associated with obesity. I see this quite commonly in nurses. You know, I'm not wanting to pick on, on a group here, but I've seen many nurses over the years that carry too much body weight. But I've seen also people in other occupations, uh, air traffic controllers, for example, I've seen taxi drivers, you know, people who work these long shifts, they can always find it impossible to lose weight. So, because shift workers sleep for less time on average, again, their gut bacteria messed up, the insulin sensitivity is messed up, they're much more susceptible to weight gain. Next time you hop in a taxi or go to a hospital, have a look and you'll see what I mean. It's unfortunate that some people have to work shift, 
but that can unfortunately really mess up their body's ability to maintain a good hormonal homeostasis and their sleep cycles messed up and that'll get back give them bacterial problems and all the associated issues that go with it if you're in this category think how you can maybe change and get away from shifts looking more maybe going into a day job or changing especially if you're really concerned about your weight and your health third part gut restoring supplements so this is the icing on the cake if you can put a couple of quality products into the mix it's going to help to clean up that gut you know speed up that cleansing effect so much faster you're going to put enzymes in there probiotics you're going to really turn things right around quite quick so the first product we're looking at really is a broad spectrum antifungal antimicrobial antiparasite formula something that cleans up the gut but doesn't trash the beneficial bacteria and the second formula we only need two formulations here is a probiotic with enzymes in it so the probiotic formula should have the right lactobacillus strains in there and the right bifido strains and there should be the correct enzymes to balance this formula to allow a proper breakdown of food this is going to help you a lot and help you to overcome lots of different digestive problems let's now look at a gut restoring supplement let's look at something that's very important to clean up the gut we've spoken already about imbalances in the digestive system We've spoken about how some bacteria can make you lose weight and others can make you maintain the body fat. What science hasn't really validated, but which I've seen through repeating many thousands of stool tests, is that people have got a really messed up gut. Many people have got bacteria which they don't need in high amounts. And we're talking bacteria like Pseudomonas. We're talking Citrobacter. And bacteria like this, names you perhaps may have never heard of. We're also talking about many different types of yeast that I commonly see in people's digestive systems that are overgrown. I see up to 19 different strains of candida in people's digestive systems. I also see other kinds of yeast sitting there that need cleaning up. So these are the bad guys, they need taking out. Now you can do that with antifungal pharmaceutical drugs or antibiotics, but the problem with these things is they really mess up the gut and they're indiscriminate. They're gonna take out all the good stuff and all the bad stuff so that's not really what you want. We've already associated antibiotics with you know, animals getting fat and also people getting fat. We've seen that, that when little children, you know, infants get antibiotics, they've got a much higher incidence of obesity when they get older. So that's not the right path for you to take. You don't want to take these kind of drugs to clean up the gut. You want something that's natural, that's not addictive, that's going to do the job without screwing up your gut. But also it's important, I think, to point out here that you want something that works on parasites, fungi, and bacteria all in one. That's very important that you don't take two or three different types of things. So if your gut's been sick and crappy from all these years of eating poor foods, you can't just quickly take something for two or three days and clean it all up. You need to take something that cleans up all those yeasts that thrive on all the sugars. You need to take something that wipes out all those bacteria that come about from these imbalances. So these things are all taking up valuable space in your gut. They're basically taking over the gut. They're hijacking the gut. They need taking out. They're competing with the good bacteria. They're stopping the balance from really getting there, the balance that you're looking for. They're bottlenecking and they're precluding your ability to maintain a good, even body weight. They need taking out. I've used antifungal, antimicrobial products now for many, many years on people. And I realized that the best possible approach was to roll everything into one particular formula. It just works so well for people. And once you've taken it for a period of time, you'll notice that your digestive system will undergo changes. Your energy will come up. Your bowel function will normalize. Your blood sugar will start normalizing. You won't be snacking on a lot of bad foods anymore because you're taking out the guys that are actually calling your name, telling you to feed them the sugars that they really crave. So once you've turned them off, you won't be getting those bad messages anymore from your gut to your brain. Let's talk about Canzita Remove. I designed Canzita Remove in 2013. After being in the clinic for approximately, I think 26 years, 27 years of seeing patients, I used many different types of products to try and work on people to clean up their gut. From many different companies. I've, resent, I've represented several companies as their technical, technical expert. 
I've also designed products for other companies and helped to market those companies, but I really wanted to make something for my patients that was really going to work. Something that was going to target lots of different types of yeast, lots of dysbiotic bacteria, lots of parasites, something to clean up the gut. I wanted to put something in the hands of somebody where they didn't have to take a half a dozen different supplements. Something that was going to work every time, something that was going to be very effective. So Cancida Remove was designed after looking at thousands of different comprehensive stool tests. I started to look at the sensitivity or the susceptibility panels at the end of the stool test to work out what were the best agents to target bacteria, yeast and parasites. What were the most effective things I could use? And then I, I set about putting a formula together. This formula didn't happen overnight. It's had many revisions. There's been a very careful balance, an exact balance of the ingredients in this product. I've sought the hot, most highly effective natural medicines I could find for this product. We've used standardized herbal medicines, meaning the active ingredient is therapeutically high. The balance is correct. They've been carefully proportioned and also the product is sustained release. That means that when you take it, it breaks down very slowly over a period of time in your gut. So you don't need a lot of this product to, to really work. Some patients cut the tablet in two or three pieces. Others will use the, the tablet as it is. It's been used on young children. It's been used on elderly people. It's been used on thousands of people. And the feedback we've had from Kanzita Remove, both from the public and from physicians using the formula, has been absolutely outstanding. I don't need to redefine and improve this formula anymore. After multiple revisions, I'm very happy with the outcome. And many different stool tests now with patients using this product have shown me how super effective it is at removing up to 19, 20 different types of candida from the gut, including also more rare forms of yeast. I've also found it effective with Blastocystis hominis with a parasite that can be hard to shift. I've also found it very good for SIBO patients. This product's been used for people with inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, people with constipation or diarrhea. I have people taking this product when they go traveling or on vacation to, you know, to third world countries, for example. It's been used by shift workers. It's been used by many different people. And the results have been very, very positive. You can look, look up Kanzita Remove by going to the Kanzita website where you can actually read the full page and the product description. This will give you an indication on all the different natural medicines in this product. So you'll find often when you look at the at the supplement facts box on this that many of the ingredients in here fact are sold as separately as singular products and many patients over the years have spent a fortune buying all of these singular products but I've picked the best of the best and put them in this tablet called Kanzita Remove. It's the perfect product to clean up that gut if you want to really look at getting the gut in a good balanced shape and it works very well indeed if you follow the Mevi diet. You can't just take a tablet and have a crappy diet and expect to get the outcome you're looking for. The Kanzita products are beautiful when used according to my recommendations in this presentation with the correct diet and with the correct lifestyle by improving your sleep, by removing the stress from your life, by exercising regularly and eating good food. That's how you're going to get the optimal result that you're looking for. The second product we're going to look at is a high quality probiotic. But I'd like you to consider taking enzymes at the same time as a probiotic. Many people take a probiotic separately from an enzyme formula, but they work so well when you put them together. Enzymes are crucial. As I've mentioned previously in other YouTube videos, as soon as the temperature exceeds 47 centigrade, not sure if that is in Fahrenheit, but when the temperature exceeds when you're cooking food, you destroy the enzymes in these food. So chances are you're likely not eating an all raw kind of a vegan diet. I mean, most people don't do this. Most people will eat some type of cooked foods in their diet. So you want to ensure you've got enzymes in your diet. This will ensure that you break those foods down properly and that the digestive system gets those tiny little fibers at once to build and grow good bacteria on. So by taking the correct strains and the correct digestive enzymes simultaneously, you're really going to achieve that effect. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to get a lot less bloating, less gas, 
And you'll notice within about two weeks that the bowels will start to improve much better, much better. You'll be going to the bathroom more regularly. You'll have more well-formed motions and a lot more digestive comfort. So remember, it's all about getting that digestive system silent and quiet. No bloating, a nice flat tummy, minimal gas, and regular bowel motions. The difference can make or break you know, your weight loss program. So this is a key product that works right alongside a very good antimicrobial. Did you know that the problem with the probiotic markers was one of the main reasons in America why manufacturers were basically called upon to prove that their products were superior, were actually viable, because in fact, several years ago, when I really looked carefully at the probiotic market, well over 50% of all probiotics that were available were in fact dead. They weren't even viable at all. So this is what forced GMP with manufacturing of dietary supplements. Well, I'm well ahead of the eight ball, and I realized this years ago, so the probiotics I use are only really made by very reputable companies that have been working with GMP standards and ISO ratings now for a long, long time, long before the shake-up of the industry. Many people aren't aware of this when it comes to dietary supplements, but many probiotics you buy are in fact dead or useless. So be careful what you buy because, you know, this is going to lead to disappointment because you're not going to get the outcome that you're looking for. Make sure that you check out the link regarding the proper probiotic and enzyme formula I'm going to discuss in a minute because you can read about each and every different enzyme in there and probiotic and why I actually put them in the formula. Let's now discuss the second product. Only two products are required for this three-step program, Canzilla Remove and Canzilla Restore. Canzilla Restore was designed to complement the action of Canzilla Remove. These products can both be taken simultaneously. They don't cancel each other out. In fact, they work very well together and complement the action of each other. So Canzilla Remore Remove is a product that helps to clean up the gut and remove dysbiosis, unwanted obesogenic bacteria, parasites. It also helps to clean up the body from many different types of yeast that can overpopulate the gut. There's no point cleaning up the gut and removing all of these bad microbes unless you replace them with good microbes. And that's where the action of Canzilla Restore comes in. So recolonization is a very important part of this program. So once you get rid of the bad bugs, you need to put the bad, the good bugs back in, replace them with the good bugs. So the uniqueness about Canzilla Restore also is the fact that it contains seven different digestive enzymes. Once you start eating healthy, good food, you've gone through the big cleanup, you remove the bad foods from the diet, you know, all the takeaway foods, the processed foods, the refined foods, you replace them with good, healthy foods, which we previously discussed. The action of Canzilla Restore complements this type of diet because the enzymes which we put in this formula will really greatly assist in allowing the digestive system to more effectively break these foods down to smaller particles. This will further then allow the good bacteria to feed on these foods residues to build even larger colonies of beneficial bacteria. So that's the uniqueness about the product. Let me talk a little bit about why I designed this product and how important it is for your gut particularly with reference to the beneficial bacteria that I put in there. You don't need a whole bunch of different probiotic strains to get a good effect with recolonization. One of the most important probiotics for you to consume is Lactobacillus acidophilus. And the particular one I've used in this product is called DDS-1, or Department of Dairy Science 1, which was designed by Dr. Kem Shahani. Dr. Shahani spent his whole life studying beneficial bacteria and spent over 20 years researching Lactobacillus acidophilus. He created the DDS-1 strain based on human Lactobacillus, which is very unique. So DDS-1 naturally adapts to the human body because it has human origins, unlike any other probiotic on the market. Lactobacillus acidophilus produces itself various antibiotic properties which help to overpower and destroy many pathogenic microbes in the body. It also helps and encourages the production 
of different vitamins and hydrogen peroxide in the body, which again is a cleansing effect. The great thing about this particular lactobacillus is the fact that it's been so widely researched and over 200 papers have been published on this particular probiotic alone. It also helps the body because it lasts for a long time in the body. It doesn't get easily broken down by heat. So you can store this product safely for up to two years without much degradation in the quality of it whatsoever. So it makes it ideal for you to take if you're on vacation or if you're traveling somewhere. So we only use high quality raw materials when we, when we design our products, but I'm particularly pleased with the blend of probiotics which have been managed to put together when it came to designing Kenzie to restore. So I'm very pleased with this product and I know that you will be pleased with the outcome of this product as well. Remember also, it, it's time release, just like Kenzie to remove. So the special capsule that we use from a company called Capture Gel will ensure that this product hits the target of the small intestine. It will not be affected by the stomach. So there you have it. That's Kenzita Restore, a good accompaniment to Kenzita Remove. Both of these products will work very effectively in the program, particularly if you take into account the lifestyle changes, including looking at stress reduction and sleep. Right, here we go. There's one catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? Let's talk about the catch. If you really want to get the most out of the program I've outlined in this presentation, you need to think carefully about your objective. You're most likely watching this because you could be one of those patients I've seen that's had fat for so long, they've basically given up. They've tried every diet, they've tried every exercise program. They lose weight, they gain weight. They're sick to their back teeth of that. They want to get that weight off and they want to get it off permanently. Well, I'm telling you, you can get it off permanently, but there's always a catch. One thing I really want you to do is not to drink any alcohol at all for at least 12 weeks. Now, if you're serious about losing weight, you won't have a problem at all doing this because you're not going to get your gut bacteria in fine shape by drinking alcohol regularly, even drinking once a week here or there, having the odd glass of wine or beer. It's not going to happen. If you're really serious and you watch this presentation and you say, that's it, I'm going to get that, that weight off, it's best you stop drinking all alcohol for 12 weeks minimum. Your bacteria are going to love it and you're going to grow them back a lot faster, the beneficial ones. But also what you'll find long term is when you do lose that weight and keep it off, you're probably going to revise the way your drinking habits you know, have been over the years. You're probably not going to drink every day anymore. You'll drink every now and then like I do. I enjoy a glass of wine. I certainly wouldn't drink wine every single day. I like a cocktail in summertime, but I wouldn't have a cocktail every day. When friends come over, we'll have a cocktail. But it's few and far between. But I do enjoy those kind of things. Remember, you can't just take a pill and fix your ill. It's not going to work. Self-illusion is a big illusion. It's the worst form of illusion of all. You need to really wake up to the fact that you need to do something to get, you know, to achieve what you're looking for. So it's not going to come easy, but initially you'll find it may be a bit of a struggle. But once you overcome that, it'll be a lot easier as time goes by. So remember, three months, no alcohol. The other thing I want you to do is to give up artificial sweetness because they trick, they give the brain different kinds of signals. There are ample studies now that show that people who are hooked on artificial sweeteners, in fact, get more fat and more obese than people who don't take these at all. Diet sodas are now linked with obesity and an increase also in big insulin problems and diabetes. So my recommendation is for you to completely give up artificial sugars. You don't want these in your diet. If you want to grow healthy bacteria, you're not going to grow them with artificial, artificial sweeteners. They're actually linked also with dysbiotic flora. So, a very good point. Try and avoid alcohol. Try and avoid these sugars. The changes won't be permanent in your life unless you start making these changes right now. You need to make these changes consistently for a period of time until they become a habit. Last point I want to talk about is the sleep. We talked already a lot about the sleep. You need to get that sleep cycle in great shape because when you mess up people's sleep, you mess up that bacteria. And remember, a messed up gut bacteria will in turn mess up the cognition and the mood, which in turn will mess up the gut bacteria. You've got to break that cycle. 
Once you start sleeping properly, understanding about the role of stress in your life and eating properly, it's going to be amazing. You're finally going to get that weight off. And you, if you follow this for a while, you're going to keep it off for good. And that's what it's all about. Let's summarize a few points now with this slide. We've gone through many studies. We've shown you reasons why many people can't lose weight, regardless of the kind of diet that they're on. Unless your gut bacteria are in a really good place, unless you've got good balanced levels of beneficial bacteria, low levels of yeasts, you've got no SIBO, you've repaired the leaky gut. The point I'm making is unless your digestive system is in optimal condition, regardless of the kind of foods you eat, you will not maintain that weight loss permanently that you're really looking for and have been doing so for so many years. So a healthy gut is critical when it comes to maintaining that weight loss. Many patients over the years have seen me, have complained of being on all kinds of diets, have lost weight, but then within a period of time, they've gained all that weight back again. And that's because the focus was never on the gut bacteria. The other things that you really need to think about are the lifestyle changes. We spoke about the sleep and also about stress reduction. These are two critical and often overlooked points when it comes to permanent weight loss. So I'd like you to pay particular attention on the sleep patterns and also on the stress reduction. But you will find that by eating a higher quality diet and improving the gut bacteria, that these things will be a lot easier to maintain. And the last point is a few supplements, well-chosen supplements that are going to help your gut to achieve that high state of health that you're looking for. So all you need is a couple of supplements that will get the gut in great shape. Once you put those into the mix and have understood the relevance of the gut bacteria and also the lifestyle changes, you're well on the way to getting that permanent weight loss that you've been looking for, no doubt for a long, long time, like many of my patients have. Let's now look at some really good ideas for you. We've, we've gone through a lot of material and it's the permanent weight loss that most people are looking for that I've seen in my clinic, the permanent weight loss. You don't want to gain all that weight back again. This is going to knock your confidence. It's going to create anxiety and depression. It's going to make you wonder if it, it's really worthwhile joining up to the gym or buying just another diet book again. I don't care how much weight you've gained. It doesn't really concern me. Some patients I've worked with over the years have been many, many, you know, several hundred pounds. So the weight's not the core issue here. When you follow the program correctly, your weight will come off and it will stay off. And I absolutely guarantee this. So this is a unique opportunity that you've got presented to you right now. And remember, it's based on the very latest scientific research. This could change your entire life and the life of your family and friends. No doubt you've got clothes that you've always wanted to wear or go on holidays or vacations you've always wanted to go but never had the confidence to do so. Well, now's your opportunity. So don't hesitate. Think of this opportunity. It's a very simple program. It's low cost. And all it requires is a little bit of effort on your part to give you the ultimate outcome that you're looking for as a fantastic body. So I urge you not to hesitate, but to start right now today. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. The sooner you start, the sooner the results come. And remember, I can't wait to see the new you. So please send me some pictures of your results. Thank you so much for paying attention and allowing me to go through this presentation with you today. Thank you.